Howdy everyone, I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas and I record all of my lectures. Now this is part of my lecture series in the Introduction to Data Analytics and Geostatistics course for undergrads. And in this lecture, we get into the concept of spatial bias. Where does it come from? And what are we gonna do about it? Now, what's the motivation for talking about spatial bias? Well, what I would say is virtually all of our subsurface data sets, all of our samples that we get from the subsurface or any type of spatial sparsely sampled setting is going to be sampled in a biased manner. And so what does that mean? Well, it means we can't use raw statistics from that data to support decision making. If we're sampling porosity of the subsurface and it's biased high, we're going to think that there's more pore volume if we take the raw or what we'll call the naive statistic. We need to do something about it because otherwise we'll just think things are better and then they actually are. So let's get into what are the issues? Why do we actually have sampling bias? Now, take a look at this data set. This is why this is X. This is a two-dimensional plan view of the subsurface. These could be multiple vertical wells. And those are the average porosity values through some interval in the subsurface where we have a reservoir. Now, if we look through the data set, this is the pretty awesome, I think the plasma, maybe Inferno color bar. I think it's plasma from Matplotlib. And if you look at it, what you're going to observe is that in general that we have denser sampling where we have high values, the yellows and oranges, and we have sparser samples where we have the lower values, the more of the purples type of colors here. Okay, so clearly we've sampled in a manner where we're more densely sampled in the high values. Okay, if we went ahead and calculated a statistic from that, we would find that the average over this area of interest would be too high. We created a bias in the sampling. Okay, so let's just let's just think a little bit about what's the source of this bias. And we'll do a little recall. In the previous discussions on statistics, we talked about issues around sampling and getting our statistics. And we talked about the fact that data in the subsurface is collected to answer a question or multiple questions. How far does the contaminant plume extend? You're gonna sample the peripheries of the area of, of interest, the phenomenon that you're trying to understand and see how far it goes. Where's the fault you're gonna sample or drill based on where you think the fault might be and try to bound that uncertainty. What's the highest mineral grade or porosity or permeability? You're going to try to sample the best part of the reservoir. How far does the reservoir extend? offset drilling. Okay, we're also going to sample not just to answer questions and minimize uncertainties. We're going to sample in order to maximize net present value directly. Now we maximize net present value by minimizing uncertainty. Don't get me wrong, or by finding out how far the reservoir goes. But sometimes we just want to get the best stuff out of the ground. We want to get the best production rates, the best mineral grades, find the thickest part of the aquifer with the most amount of water, whatever it might be. Sometimes we are drilling, not for information, but to exploit the resource. And so that's another driver for where we sample. Now, it's not all just because of a wanting to exploit the resource or reduce uncertainty. We also sample in a way that's limited by abstractions. We might find that we're not able to access all parts of the subsurface equally safely because of surface obstructions, because of geomechanical constraints and the way that we drill and so forth. We might not be able to run an evaluation on permeability of the on the lowest permeability rock because it's just not competent. It would take too long to run the test on permeability. Okay, so there's all kinds of reasons we can't sample the whole subsurface in some form of random sampling or equal likelihood of sampling. But that's what we would have to do. If I wanted to sample the subsurface such that I could use the samples directly to calculate a statistic and deem that that would be representative, I only have two approaches available to me, random sampling or regular sampling. 
regular sampling once again, assuming that you're not aligning with natural periodicity of the spatial phenomenon, i.e. if the phenomenon does this and you're drilling all of the highs and missing the troughs or vice versa. Now, let's assume random sampling. What would happen if you went into your asset manager, your team lead, and you were to say, I want to drill the next well in the Gulf of Mexico, $150 million maybe with a production test, and I want to do it using random sampling. Of course, that would be ludicrous. That would be ridiculous. We can't change the way that we sample the data. We can't, not for statistical representativity. But us with the geostats knowledge and data analytics knowledge, what we do is we need to address the sample bias after sampling. So what I would say is our rule is never use raw spatial data to calculate statistics without making an attempt to assess bias and correcting it. All right, how are we gonna accomplish that? We got two methodologies by which we can do this. The first methodology we can use is we can do declustering techniques. So we want to adjust and get the histograms, the summary statistics right. Declustering will do it by assigning a weight to each one of the data, that each data value. Okay, and so you could imagine previously you had a table with a column of values at every single location. Now you have a column of values at every single location and a column, a column of weights. And so for every data value, you're going to have a weight. Every data value, you have a weight. And that weight is going to tell you about how representative or how sparsely sampled, I should say, each one of the samples is. And I'll get into details around that. Okay, so we're going to be able to then use those weights in any one of our statistical calculations, and I'll demonstrate that for you. The biasing techniques are different. The biasing techniques say you did not sample the entire distribution. You just missed the worst part of the reservoir, or you missed the best part of the reservoir. And so you'll use some form of secondary information to fill in missing parts of the distribution. More complicated. I'll explain it to you. I'll show you an example, but it definitely requires a lot more trade craft. It's not a simple plug and play type of routine. All right. So I'll stop right there with this video. And next, we will get into the details of declustering. And then after that, we will get into a discussion around debiasing. Well, I hope this was helpful to you. Once again, I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I record all of my lectures to support working professionals and most of all, my students. Shout out to y'all. Um, hope you are finding these videos useful. All right, take care.